If you have not accepted Christ into your life, all the word tells us, if you believe it in your heart and you express it, you are saved. Believe in your heart that Jesus died, was buried, and arose. You too can be saved. We ask you that if you're watching us online, that you find a church home, a Bible teaching church that will give you the power that you need to get through the day. In today's sermon, from the Church of the Living God, Temple 208, we have a special guest, Dr. Arnington Rogers, Jr., bringing you the Word of God. Sit back and enjoy. Uh, the scripture for today is going to be taken from Luke 15, 1 through 32, and the title that I will be working from is going to be the power of a changed mind. Luke 15, 1 through 32, giving honor to God. Without him, my life and this journey that I've been on would be for naught. Giving honor to the shepherd of this house, Dr. Bishop Dr. Ernest Dowdy, uh, the assistant pastor, Elder Billy Dowdy and his wife, First Lady, of course, LaShawn Dowdy for Bishop, um, Elder Billy and his wife, Brenda, and the dignitaries and the uh, officers of this church. Uh, but also, uh, I didn't save, nor did I forget, but you say the best for last. And that would be my wife, Dr. Gwendolyn Rogers. who is ministering somewhere else this morning. And um, I couldn't be there with her and she couldn't be here with me, but we are serving the same God. And that just lets you know that God is everywhere at the same time. Amen. And to you, my father's children, I greet you with the word of peace. If you could turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15 verse 1 through 32. I'm not going to read the entire, it is a very familiar passage of scripture. And so you will know it. So I'm going to jump around because I'm only going to focus on a couple of different scriptures in this because I want to, I want to give some laser attention to this particular passage. Luke 15, 1 through 32, if we could all stand for reading of the word of God. And I'm going to be reading from the new American standard version of the Bible. And he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that is coming to me. And so he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey in a distant, to a distant country. where, And there he squandered his estate in wild living. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began doing without. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to have his fill of the carrot pods that the pigs were eating, and no one was giving him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired laborers have more than enough bread, but I am dying here from hunger. I will set out and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me. As your hired, treat me as one of your hired laborers. So he set out and came to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. For a few moments this morning, I, I would like to talk about the power of a changed mind. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you, Father, for this moment in time that we come to hear your word. Father, we stand before you, Lord. Father, I, I stand that you sent a word through me, Father God, that you would have your children here. Send your word, Lord. Send your word, Heavenly Father. Send your word. In Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning, the story that we just mentioned, as you all know, is the story of the prodigal son. It's where a son is so wanting to get out that he gets his inheritance early. And he decides to go out on his own. Sometimes in life, we're so quick to judge others when they have shortcomings. It may be true that we may not know folk that have shortcomings in life. They may also make wrong choices in life and end up in trouble. It is our responsibility to always pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Everybody is not on the same level, but we serve the same God. In this passage of scripture, we find that the prodigal son had left home because he wanted to live the way that he wanted to live. His father was happy to see him and brought him home. The power of a changed mind. This young man had the streets calling him. Yeah, it was, it, it's what we see now. We, we've romanticized, and I can only speak from an African-American perspective because that's who I am and that's how I grew up. So uh, allow me for a few minutes to just illustrate it from that context. We like to, we have seen people romanticize being in the hood. It calls us, it, it calls the ones, the young men and young ladies that grew up in the suburbs and had good families and had good situations, but they still want to gravitate to that which, which the romanticization of it looks like it is the fun thing to do, that everybody is just hanging out and having a good time and all it is good and it is glorious and it is having fun. And I, I've also told my children because I worked hard so they didn't have to go through all of that. So um, I, I put them in a good situation. And when I saw that they were wanting to gravitate to that, I saw some friends come to the house. And um, when I saw certain friends come to the house, I pulled out my oil. Uh, because uh, you can call me what you want, but I understood where they was coming from, and we wasn't going to have that in my house because, see, I worked to get out of that, and I wasn't going to allow it to come back. So when I share with my children, I said, why is it so glamorous to go to a place where everybody that's there is trying to get out of? Let me, let me, let me say that for the people in the back. Why is it so glamorous and so romantic to go to a place where everybody else is trying to get up. I have yet in my um, <clears throat> years of living, I have yet to find someone that says, when I make it, when I hit the lottery, when, when I make it, I'm going to move to the hood. I, I, I've yet to see that. I, I, I've, I've been around enough people to know. I've been all over the world, literally, and I've yet to find someone that says, when I hit this multi-million dollar lottery, I'm moving straight to the projects. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I, I grew up in the projects, and I'm not, I'm not knocking that. If, if that's your situation in life, and that's where God has you at this particular point, all I'm saying is, is that this young man was called by his own self to go do something that was against who he was. And I love that part because in his mind, he's thinking that's what it is. I want my money now. We, and we actually see that in, in, in social media right now is that now the parents don't know anything and, and the parents don't know. Well, I, I, I beg to differ because no parent knows anything. Here's why. I don't care how old you are. Every single day with your child, is always something new. You don't want to know why? Because you ain't never been there before. So how can you possibly have all the answers if you never experienced that day? Where, so here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. So we have this young man who goes to his father. Now he knows they have money. 
He's already seen it. He's grown up around it, but he wants to spend his money. And, and the Bible says, so get ready to clutch your pearls because I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that he spent his money on prostitutes. Now, I know that's not popular in the church and we don't want to hear that because we holy and we got virgin ears and we never heard such language before, but the Bible does say it. So uh, that's what he did which means he spent his money on sex. Oh my God, he said the three letter word, I can't, I don't understand what's happening right now uh, because we're not supposed to say that. Well, we all got here some way. And there's only one Jesus. I'm gonna let y'all work on that when you go home. So that's what he did. He, he saw all of this that enticed him. And the beauty of this what I love about this is the father. And allow me for just a minute to, to, to divert just a tab. In, it, in social media today and in the media today, the black father is being dismissed. The black father is, is, is rendered useless in a lot of eyes of the individuals. That's why I like the fact of this particular one, it's about the father. How the father had enough wisdom to let him go on about his way, to let him go do what he needed to do. Because in a sense, you could kind of see that the father already knew what was going to happen. You don't want to know why the father already knew what was going to happen? Because we already been there. We know he's going to come back because we know the money going to run out. So we know things are going to happen. So always follow what is in your heart. So we want to talk about the realization for change. Here's this young man in all of his wisdom, spent all of his money. Now he's laying out feeding pigs and came from a family that owned cattle and sheep. And he's about in certain uh, contexts, certain versions, eat pig slop. The Bible says he came to himself. Allow me for a few moments to dig a little deeper with that. The Bible says he came to himself. He came to his senses. What that tells me is that he already knew who he was. Brother Rogers, what is it that you're saying? We, we can read that. I understand what you're saying, but imagine yourself getting ready to eat pig slop. And all of a sudden, he remembers. My father got laborers that eat better than this. My father's got maids that wear better clothes than this. And I'm hiring myself out. And I'm getting ready to eat the same thing that I'm getting ready to feed these animals. To the point where as a Jewish boy, this was unclean. Why? Jews don't eat pig. Jews don't eat pork. He was willing because he was so hungry, because he was starving, to eat the stuff that he was feeding to the animals that he was not even allowed to eat. Let that sink in for a second. Have you ever been so desperate? Have you ever been so, so hungry that you were willing to do stuff that was long out of your character? Oh, there's people in the world that have done that. I came around here to let you know, though, it's at that point, it is at that juncture where God works his magic. It is, it's at your lowest point where you don't see nothing else is when he says, now I got you where I want you. Now I got your attention. I need you to come to yourself. Now, now, now let's, let's go back a little bit further. Can we go back just a tad bit further? Who was this young man? But I want to go back a little bit more in the beginning because the Bible tells us that God did what? Scooped up dirt. Shaped it in the form of man and then blew the breath of life. So at the end of the day, each and every single person, when you're coming to yourself, you're coming to the original breath. 
that was in your body from the beginning. And that's why things just don't sit right with you. That's why, that's why things can't be done in a certain way because inherently, as the Bible tells us, it's a battle of principalities. And here he was feeding animals that he could not even eat and still be a respected Jew. But he came to himself. He realized I got to change some things. I, there's some things that I need to do because my life is not right. How many of us have had that conversation before we got saved? How many of us have had that conversation after we've gotten saved? There's some things that just say right. But too many times what we want to do is we want to blame other people for our own circumstances. That's what I love about this particular passage. The young boy never said anything about whose fault that it was. He could have said, we could have been hearing the story where he said, uh, my father didn't give me enough money. Therefore, it is his fault that I'm about to eat this pig slop because he didn't give me enough to sustain myself. No, that wasn't the case. He gave you enough. You just didn't have a w the wisdom to spend it. And a lot of times that's what happens. We think that we know better than the next person. We think that we're smarter than everybody else. We think that we got it all going on. We got the, what, what does it say? We got the tiger by the tail. And the streets is calling us. And we want to dabble a little bit here and dabble a little bit there. And we, and we think that we can do all these things and spend all our money and still make it to be rich. I want a million dollars, but I'm spending $3,000 a month. That math don't math. Amen? So here he was. The next thing that takes place in this short passage is the recognition of what change is needed. As he's there, hungry, starving, wondering how did I get myself here? Never mind the fact that he was having a hallelujah good time in a whole nother country. Oh, okay, I see I missed y'all. So let me see if I can make a plank. What he did was he got all his money and he went to Vegas. Oh, I'm hitting home. He went to Vegas and, and he was gambling and all the other stuff that go on in Vegas. And, and, and so all of a sudden, um, when we're in Vegas, I like to call it because you can actually see it in their eyes, at least I can. You can see the ones that are walking around and, you, and it just looks like in their eyes that they let it ride. They let it ride and it went the wrong way and now they're stuck. And I've seen that and I, and I just pray, Lord, I'm never in that situation. But here he was in a whole nother country living the life that he thought he was going to live. He thought the money was going to last forever because what he didn't realize is what it took to get to where he was. That's what happens with a lot of our young folk. A lot of our young folk see they operate in their circumstances now. But see, they don't understand what it took for the parents to get to the point that they had lights on. They, they had clothes on their back, toothpaste, toothbrushes. And so it takes me back a little bit, if you don't mind, I'll share a little bit. It takes me back to my family. My mother raised us, seven of us. And, and as I was sitting around one day, and, and I was just reminiscing about, I never had my lights off. On a secretary's salary, seven kids, never had my lights off. I've been without food. I don't ever remember not having toothpaste. I don't ever remember not having toilet paper. The small things that you, that you think about, that, well, that you don't really think about, that are big things. I don't ever remember not having the, the necessities in my home. But here's what I know. Every night after she rolled her hair, she would be on her knees. That's what I had in my house. I had prayer in my home. So for my journey, when I came to myself, I understood where it came from. And that's what was happening in this young man's life. And what he recognized was that, hold on a second. Here I am. I done hired myself out as a servant. I came here with money. Now I work for somebody else who don't think too much about me other than to throw me out here to feed his own pigs. What have I gotten myself into? And he recognized that. And he says, 
my father has servants. How many of my father's hired laborers have more than enough bread? Isn't that something right there that he can think about that? They got more than enough. The place I just left that I, I, I couldn't stand has more than enough. I can't even feed myself. Here I am dying from hunger. His recognition says, I will set out. Now, my third and final point, the realization or the reaction to change brings the change mind. First, you have to realize that you need to change. So the second thing you must do, the second thing you must do is you have to have a, a, a realization for the change. Yeah. Then lastly, what you got to do is you have to have a reaction. See, a lot of times what we want to do is we want to sit back and wait. We want God to come in on his white horse, knocking on the door saying, hey, I'm here. Come on outside. But no, his reaction was he got up. Y'all missed that part. His reaction was he got up. He didn't wallow in his sorrow. He didn't sit there and complain about, oh, I've been here for 37 years. And I, he didn't do none of that like we, like we like to do. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do, Jesus. I'm sitting here about to eat the pig slop, Jesus. Jesus, help me. Make the pig slop taste like barbecue, Jesus. Let me get a little salt for the pig slop, Jesus. Let me get a little mustard for the pig slop, Jesus. Help the pig slop taste better. But he's still stuck. See, too many times we get stuck and complacent in our situations when all you got to do is get up up and move see that's the power of a changed mind see see a changed mind won't let you do what you used to do a changed mind will cause some reaction a changed mind will cause you to get up and go an unchanged mind will go get some mustard an unchanged mind will add a little ketchup because, see, we, we know we're in the situation. We know that the father got the money. But, see, we're too embarrassed. We got too much pride. I can't go back there. My, my big brother going to laugh at me. The servants are going to ridicule me. My father don't love me. I respectfully submit to you that is the enemy. That right there is the enemy wants you to stay in the pig slop and keep you there as long as he can keep you there. But I res also respectfully submit to you that all you got to do is get up. But then once you get up, then you got to move. See, it's at that point in everybody's juncture. It's at that point in everybody's journey where you can look back. Once you get up and you move, you can look back and say, devil. You ain't got no, I ain't got no use for you no more. All this stuff you had me doing, all this lifestyle that you had me operating in. Oh, no, no, no. I'm getting up. I'm rising up. I'm moving on. I got to go. Notice this. <laughs> he didn't call nobody. He didn't post it on Facebook. I'm about to get up, everybody. Keep me in prayer. I I'm about to get out of my situation. Y'all pray for me. No, he had a conversation with him and himself. I, I tell one of my children all the time, we don't need to be telling nobody what we're praying about. That's between you and God. As we used to say, Yo, that's, this is your house, this is God's house. Why are you telling everybody your business that's going on with you and God? And then expect them to understand and help you. No, it's, it wasn't on Instagram that I'm getting ready to go back to my father's house. He didn't have to share with anybody. It wasn't for them to share. But he got up. And when he got up, he got to moving. Understand this. He had no more pride. He, he had no more uh, pride in what he was doing. Because the word tells us he was even going to denounce his heritage. He was even, Father, hire me as one of your laborers. Hire me as one of your servants because I have sinned and I have disrespected who you are and everything that you have done for us. So hire me. He was willing to be less than what he already was. See, that's powerful right there. He was willing to be less than who he was when he left in order to get back where he came from. 
Oh, that'll preach. He dialed himself down. See, a lot of times in the church, we want to be so holier than thou, and, and we done got saved, and we got big Bibles, and our Bible costs $100, and we want to wave it at folks, and we want to let them know how much we know and how much we have read because we are now the authority. Until you swallow your pride and are be willing to be less than, can you really reach your full potential? Oh, uh, well, wait a minute, brother. Why, why I got to be less than? The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror. You are absolutely correct. But Jesus became less than who he was, his authority of who he was in order to lift everyone else. This young boy, this young boy, this young boy who spent all his money, this no-name young man who spent all his money in buying prostitutes and having a wonderful life and all of these things, realize something. All this I'm doing, this is not who I am. This is not how I was raised. So we have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice. We can either A, operate in who we are, or decide to eat pig slop with a little mustard and barbecue sauce. Because when we're eating the pig slop, that means we're going to stay where we are. We've gotten complacent. We, we've gotten comfortable. Even though we know these circumstances aren't who we are, we've gotten complacent in it. So we're just trying to make the best out of it. This is my situation. I'm going to make the best out of it. I'm going to be satisfied in it. And I'm going to make the best out of it. Say, I, I came around here to tell you, don't put ketchup on your circumstances. Get up. Don't put mustard on your circumstance. Don't put lorries on your circumstances. Get up. Because when you get up, that's when you can turn around and look at Satan and tell him like this. You should have had me when I was weak. You should have had me when I didn't know any better. You should have had me when I didn't know how to get on my knees. You should have had me when I didn't know how to pray. You should have had me when I was down here about to eat this pig slop. But now, see, now I'm too strong for you. Now I understand who I am because I've come to myself. The original who I am is too powerful for you. And once you get up and once you take that action, you will understand the power of a changed mind. May God bless you. Thanks for watching. Be blessed by sharing this message. Support our ministry by following us on all social media platforms like YouTube. Hit the subscribe and like buttons, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Your generous giving allows the church to grow, which supports our efforts in providing the needed services for the community. There are a variety of ways for you to continue your giving. Go to the links in the description below and God bless.